Hey guys, it's Bro Uack, and happy birthday to Overwatch. Our toxic little mess is now five years old. Oh, they grow up so fast. Today is May 24th, 2016, the same day that society crumbled because of Overwatch porn being a real thing, but it's the main reason why we're still alive and well today. And I do this every single year where I do a little sit down commentary looking at the previous year of Overwatch, but I was not looking forward to making this video because in all reality, it was the worst year of Overwatch and I don't think anybody is really denying that because when you look back at it what really happened well, I mean we got Overwatch events which are always fun but always expected I mean the Halloween event was awesome and the winter event was of course the winter event and the 2021 archives events um Skin challenges, yeah, we also got that. Comic Tracer was fun, and Overwatch League skins came and went, so that's very fun. Oh, well, we got a new Japanese map after a year and a half of waiting, but it was a deathmatch map, so who really plays it? <laughs> Alien Zari was a thing, and then it got removed, kinda. Yeah, this is not looking good. In all reality, the main highlights that everyone remembers in the fifth year of Overwatch was BlizzCon Online and the recently released PvP livestream, both kind of falling short. Now, the behind the scenes look of Overwatch 2 at the BlizzCon online livestream was an awesome livestream. I mean, it showcased a lot of what we can expect coming into Overwatch 2, but it was missing three things. The release date, the price tag, and Overwatch body pillows. And people also didn't really like the PvP livestream because of the new 5v5 format, which was the big announcement from that livestream. So not only did you make the casual crowd of Overwatch extremely angry because you're not satisfying their needs, but you're also ticking off a lot the people that have been supporting this game for nearly five years because you're not releasing brand new content and the new content that you are releasing well they just don't like it they don't like the new 5v5 form that's going to be coming into overwatch 2 because apparently everyone's a tank main now but the l's don't stop there because the worst thing that happened this year that every single fan casual or hardcore shed a little tear hearing was that jeff kaplan left the overwatch team he was not going to be on any more developer updates he was not going to be working on the game he is not going to announce any thing at this year's BlizzCon, even if there is going to be a BlizzCon this year. The head honcho and the godfather of Overwatch just left. And still to this day, we don't know why he left the Overwatch team, which is kind of the embodiment of what Overwatch stands for right now is just confusion. Nobody really knows where Overwatch is heading. All we know is that the light at the end of the tunnel is Overwatch 2. And it seems like Blizzard is putting all their eggs in the Overwatch 2 basket. And that's all we really can be hopeful for when it comes to being a fan of Overwatch is Overwatch 2. And we know the sequel is going to be good, but we're hoping that Overwatch 2 was gonna breathe life into this franchise something that it slowly lost over the year but especially in the fifth year of overwatch and being a content creator for this game but more importantly a fan that was kind of a scary thing to come to terms with because we don't even know when this game is coming out but we're expected to be hopeful for this video game that is now five years old so that was a big reason why this year it was also my worst year and maybe it's because i associate myself so heavily with Overwatch that whenever Overwatch is down bad, I'm down bad, but it was a growing year for me where a lot has happened to me personally. You know, a lot of people can probably relate to that because, well, COVID hit in the summer, but surprisingly, that was actually when I was on the top of my game because, well, everyone was home, everyone was watching more content, and I was pumping out so much videos. I was making tons of my normal Overwatch news videos, funny moments, but then I even started to continue on with Chef V Whack, and I even made some vlogs of me building my Overwatch PC, and I even experimented with some other kind of videos because, well, there was no no new content for Overwatch, what am I gonna do to fill the void? I started sprinkling in other games here and there like Fall Guys or Among Us or Valorant or Apex Legends. You know, popular games that everybody was playing but still having the main course be Overwatch because that's my bread and butter. That's not ever gonna be going away. And I had no intentions to leave Overwatch and I still don't because I still love the game and it seemed like a lot of people really did enjoy it actually because it wasn't shaking things up too much because you can still have Overwatch watch as your main course of content but if you want to see other stuff from me then you got that too but this is where it sucked as a content creator because while i enjoyed making videos for other video games i wanted to do it for overwatch and that's probably the worst part about this year is that i have all these ideas that could work in different video games and while i did do it for other video games i wish it could have been in my favorite
favorite video game. I wish I could have made news videos about new heroes and new maps and new updates, but we were just kind of left with updates of hero balancing and the Overwatch events, which were fun, which were awesome, but in the meantime, what was I supposed to do in that time period? And I tried my best, and that's when I got the bright idea to live stream every single day because I saw that as an opportunity to force myself to be creative, to come up with ideas every single day. And at the beginning, it worked. I came up with some awesome live streams, and one of my favorite videos that I ever did came out of a live stream where I got an Overwatch world record getting the fastest time in the Overwatch tutorial. And I know that's such like a simple video to look back on, but it was kind of at that moment that I was like, oh, I don't need Overwatch to constantly be updating to make ideas for awesome videos. I just need to make awesome ideas for a video. And so I did that, and it was working for at least the first month. Because when you're live streaming every single day, it takes a lot out of you. Not only mentally, but creatively. And I understand that there are construction workers, doctors, nurses that are literally putting their lives on the line that work way harder than me. So I'm not denying that their job is a lot harder than mine. But I'm also not trying to say that being a content creator isn't strenuous mentally because at that time, after a while, it was. Live streaming every single day on top of making videos almost every single day by myself just took a lot out of me and I think is the main reason why the creativity spark that I had for years just kind of fell out because I was working so hard and I think it reflected in my content. You know, the ideas or the experiments or videos that I thought people were gonna like, it just didn't really stick. You know, I was starting to branch off and play with friends. I played with salty fish a lot and people liked it at the beginning but then they didn't i brought back love is whack and people like the series returning but then they didn't like it after a while and then chef you whack also was just kind of falling short after a year and a half of going strong I just didn't know where to go anymore. I think the perfect word describing this year was lost. I had no idea where to go. I didn't know where Overwatch 2 was heading and do I follow Overwatch 2 or do I go on my own path and create ideas that are based around me? Do I keep making the same videos that I've been making for the past four years or do I come up with new ideas? And when the new ideas don't work, do I keep pushing those ideas or do I go back to older ideas? And when things don't go well, is it because Overwatch isn't going well or is it because I'm I'm not going well. Is it because people are starting to hate me? Is it because people don't like who I am as a person? Because that's also something that I saw this year too was that I received the most criticism this year out of every single year. And maybe that's because the channel is still growing, gaining a new audience and any single time you grow in popularity, you start to attract a lot more negativity. And the thing about me is that I am a very, very sensitive person. Like if you ever say anything mean to me and I see it, I'll think about it for days on end and I know it's like oh you gotta have thicker skin no you think after having this YouTube channel for almost nine years that I have thick skin nope I'm still just as sensitive as I was on day one but I don't take the criticism or the negativity lightly in a way where I just cry about it I also just try to grow from it and that's why this was the worst year but also a year where and still to this day where I grew the most as a content creator but also just as a person as Zach you you know, I had a lot of self-doubt in moments where I received negativity, but I just thought, it's like, okay, well, why are people hating me? Is it because I'm super loud and energetic? Well, more than likely, it's because I'm in the Salty Fist Jeopardy video and I'm talking over everybody else and I'm screaming. So let me just tone it down a little bit and let Fitzy and Sleepy and ML7 have their moments to breathe and talk. Are people hating me because I'm talking about embarrassing girl stories on Love is Whack? Well, okay, maybe this is in the audience where I talk about OnlyFans girls and I keep it more PG or PG-13 where I talk about maybe having my first girlfriend or first kiss like I did back in the original series. Are people hating me because I'm playing a different video game that is nowhere close to Overwatch? Well, okay, then I realized that this channel was built on an FPS genre, maybe play other video games that are close to it, like Apex Legends. And while I'm not trying to, like, get an applause for trying to grow up as a content creator, all I'm hoping is that people at least see me trying. You know, I'm just trying my best out here. And one of the things 
I always tell people when it comes to being a content creator that is hard is that there is no handbook. There is no guide on how to be a quote unquote public figure on YouTube or a streamer. You know, there's no right way. There is no wrong way. But I always just see every mistake that I make as an opportunity to at least try to grow. And in times of doubt where I'm hating myself or people are hating me or hating the videos or hating Overwatch, I just try to see it as an opportunity to learn from it and try to grow from it and try to be the best possible version of me. And that's what I've been doing this whole entire year. There was a whole lot of growing and still is a lot of growing to come. But hopefully that things get better in this next year. Hopefully Blizzard shows more Overwatch 2 content. Hopefully I come up with even better ideas than I did the previous years. And hopefully I can continue old series that people enjoyed. Maybe bring back Chef Uac. I don't know. We'll just have to see. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for another year of Overwatch. Thank you for sticking by me. And you know, more videos to come. That's all I really have to say. I'm excited for Overwatch 2, and I'm excited for this next year. So I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. More Overwatch videos to come, and bye.